Yeah, it's just it's such a, a delight every time that I just relax the need to do anything with anything that's appearing, with any of the descriptions, with the stream of data. And I just allow everything to be exactly as it is, because immediately I do that, I recognize this great, bright, open intelligence that is actually always naturally present. And um, you know it's naturally present and you can discover that for yourself by well, open intelligence is another word for the capacity to know, the brilliance of your own intelligence that lights up from within all of your experience. So anything that you can think, feel, sense, experience, perceive, all of it is perceived by the same great bright intelligence. And um, you can test out and prove to yourself that it's naturally present right now by trying to turn off your capacity to know. Does it go anywhere? Can you do anything to get rid of it? Can you stop being aware of everything that you're aware of? And so, just to relax and allow the recognition of the brightness of your intelligence is such a powerful vantage from which to approach life because the conventional approach of trying to manage our experience is basically the definition of suffering. Because we're always trying to make things look the way that they think we think they should look, and that always involves effort. That always involves trying to change things from how they actually are. And it's always a life of struggle with brief moments of relief. And there are these two really distinct ways that we can live life. The conventional way of using our time and our energy and trying to use our intellect to understand everything that's going on based on learned ideas, old conceptual frameworks that we've learned from people and parents and friends and society and the media. And then we can look at the results of trying to live life like that um, personally and collectively. And I can see that personally, um, life did seem to be a struggle, it was a challenge. And uh, it's interesting to reflect on your questions and just to see how much my life has changed since coming to this training. Um, I actually met the training here in Arambol ten years ago. And, um, and I can remember being in Arambol. And it, everything was such a struggle. It, it was all such a struggle. Everything, um, the desire, oh, the endless desire for, for everything, from alcohol to wanting something to smoke, to desiring a partner, to a sudden blast of attraction for someone in particular, to desiring to leave Arambol, the desire never to leave Arambol. Um, <laughs> I felt that somehow I needed to understand every single one of these um, passing thoughts or experiences. I needed to understand it, you know, what did it mean? Where did it come from? What did I need to do about it? And then the, the challenge of just other people in general and relating with other people. It was, it, it was so tense because I had to monitor everything that I was thinking and feeling and sensing in each interaction you know, in a really kind of um, a, a really like super hyper aware way. I had to be aware of everything that I was thinking and feeling and I had to try and also work out what the other person was thinking and feeling and then I had to modify the way that I was acting and speaking based on what I thought the other person might be thinking about me, that was just a shopkeeper, you know, it was, it, like, it was so complicated, everything was so, um, such hard work. And then I can think back as well and I can see you know, the relationships with people that were really close with me in my life and, and just how challenging they were. And that was even more painful because these were the people that 
I really, really loved. You know, they're my f close friends and family, and you know, and that was so confusing for me because I, I wanted to express the love that I felt for these people in my life, and yet at the same time there was this again really close monitoring as to what I felt in the situation and. Oh no, God, they're really making me irritated again, or they're pushing my buttons, and just this tension around everything. Um, even doing nothing was really tense. I, I do, I remember so clearly going to the beach and trying to lie on a sun lounger to relax. I remember it so clearly and lying there. And there was so much going on in my mind, so much I had to think about, all of the interactions of the day, all of the interactions of the whole of my life, the possible interactions later in the day, trying to work them all out, where did they come from? All right, that's it, that, five minutes, oh, oh, that's it, I'm off, I can't lie here, you know, I've got too much to think about. And, um, and, and the difference now of seeing that the way that I live my life the simplicity that this training has allowed me, of seeing that in, in each moment I actually do have a choice. And it's a choice of victimhood, and the victimhood is believing that every thought, emotion and sensation has an independent nature and is something that I need to do something about. I need to understand and then I need to react to that and my understanding and descriptions about what's going on or I can just relax completely and allow everything to be as it is and allow the brightness of this open intelligence to be obvious as the basis of the current moment perception. And it's like, it's like night and day, these two different ways of living life. And in some ways, nothing's changed. Here I am ten years later, I'm in Arambol, you know, I'm still doing some of the same things that I did before, and yet there's no struggle. There's no difficulty. There's no real struggle with getting a slightly upset stomach. There's no real struggle with feeling too hot. There's no real struggle with a surge of desire for somebody or something. Because I know what all of these things are now. I know that all of these things that I'm experiencing are the dynamic energy of open intelligence. They're a, a stream of data. However I describe them, they all have exactly the same fundamental quality. They arise spontaneously, I experience them vividly, and then they self-release naturally. And knowing that instinctively gives a completely different context and perspective on all of my experience. I can simply allow it to be however it is one short moment at a time. And I repeat those short moments of just relaxing and allowing it to be as it is until I become certain that I can do that with all data, with all descriptions, with all experience. And in doing that it opens up into its actual reality, which is a flow of perfect benefit, natural perfection, that actually Nothing in my life needs to change for me to recognize open intelligence. Open intelligence is already the basis of everything that I'm experiencing. Nothing can actually be found to have a separate nature apart from open intelligence. And that's what I've discovered in these short moments. And it's such a relief to just to stop describing for a short moment and recognize instinctively whether what you're thinking, feeling or sensing has a nature separate, separate or apart from open intelligence. So we've already discovered that open intelligence is naturally present. You, you can't turn it off. Wherever you go, that's where you'll find open intelligence. Whatever thought you're having, whatever sight you're looking at, whatever you're hearing or feeling in your body, that's where you'll find open intelligence. And so to relax and allow that recognition of open intelligence in a very natural way to become increasingly obvious as the basis of all experience really is key. And this is the simplicity of living life. 
And the way that I found I needed to support myself with that recognition, and the way, the only way that I found that I could integrate it into everyday life was by using the media and support that was offered here. Because I tried to do it on my own, and I had some success, but there were some things that I just, they, they just seemed so compelling that I found myself thinking about them. Even though I knew that they were still open intelligence, that old habit of going in there and trying to work them out based on this old fashioned way of using my intelligence, that habit was so strong and so ingrained that I still found myself doing it. And um, so I started listening to media, um, the free media on the website, and started attending trainings, and more and more the obviousness of open intelligence as, as even the most um, compelling of desires. And desire is just a massive topic, actually. You know, it can be the desire to say something, it can be the desire to eat chocolate, it can be the desire to run away from the person that is shouting at me. All of these things could be under the topic of desire, so it's actually a really broad topic. And each one of those can best be responded to by recognizing that particular experience as the brilliance of open intelligence, that particular desire. Because you can't have a rule book for desire. You don't need a rule book for desire. You don't need a rule book for life. What you do need to do, and what I found that helped me in all situations, in the direct encounter with all desires, was to recognize open intelligence. And then what I had access to was the spontaneous wisdom of knowing what would be of most benefit in each circumstance without having any fixed reference points about how I needed to be, how I needed to respond, and what action I needed to take. And very naturally and very gradually, I found that my responses and my reactions became, much to my surprise, aligned with actually what will be of most benefit to me and other people. With everything included, all options included. And that kind of took me by surprise. That wasn't what I was expecting from this practice. And I saw that the more I practiced it, the more the wisdom of seeing exactly how I can use my speech, exactly the choices that I do have in how I relate and how I behave and how I act, and that when it was required, I could be completely silent and listen openly with a power of attention that I didn't know I had because previously my attention had been all about my thoughts about the situation or person. Instead, relying on open intelligence, there is a total openness and attention for whatever's going on. Sometimes the capacity to respond in a very direct way was what was needed as well. And I found a strength and a stability to use my speech and my actions in a way that can support people in whatever way is appropriate. And there may well be times when I can be clear and direct with people about exactly what I am prepared to listen to. I also have the choice I see about how I spend my time and who I spend it with. And do I want to spend my time with people that continue to shout at me and are angry with me? There are increasing skillful means that are completely all-inclusive, that are available to us as to how we deal with those situations. It's interesting and helpful, I found, to hear other people's experiences so I could broaden the range of options that were kind of on the horizon or on the radar. But ultimately, it was always that spontaneous responsiveness that I found I could rely on. And when that is recognized to be allowing the data to be as they are and relying on open intelligence. And that spontaneity has such power and authority, such gentleness and compassion and understanding that is always available to us. It's not that we get it from outside or somebody gives it to us, but we recognize more and more by relying on open intelligence that it is always available. But it's a training up process. 
This is something that I've seen that I can educate myself in the capacity to access. That's something I had no idea was even possible. I can teach myself to be a more powerful, loving, kind and capable human being. And, and that's what's on offer here. Um, at the beginning I had, I had no idea that that kind of thing was even possible. So I, I was, didn't really understand what the purpose of Balance View was or you know, what was the point of gaining confidence in open intelligence. But as I tested it out and I saw the results in my relationships, in my relationship with myself, in my capacity to relate to other people with openness, love, compassion, um, and in a way that was increasingly empowering for them, then that was like, wow, this, 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 this is incredible. I want more of this. And I see that the more I train it up, the more those qualities are spontaneously expressed. But it's inexhaustible, it's unending. The more confidence I have in allowing data to flow on by, recognizing open intelligence, the more those powers become obvious in more and more circumstances. And it is very powerful to see and to acknowledge the changes that have already happened. There may be some relationships, and for me and for many people, those are most often the family relationships, where the old habits of reacting and using our speech and behavior in certain ways have just been something we've been doing for so long that they may take a little bit longer to change. But I have this patience with myself now, and when I find myself not relating in the way that I would like to, then that's something that I bring to the training. I, I take to my trainer because I do not want to be a victim to that kind of behaving anymore. I want to be an example of the kind of relating that I would like to see in the world exemplified by all people. I see that unless I can exemplify that, how is anything going to change in the world? I see the things that upset me on the news, the desperate state of the world, the horrific things I see going on that really stir me up. How is that going to change if I'm not prepared to be that change? How can I expect anyone else to change if I'm not prepared to change? And here I found a support and a lifestyle and a really simple practice that allows me to be that change. So practical and yet so powerful and profound and applicable in all circumstances. The desires don't have the power over me once I recognize them to be inseparable from open intelligence. So give it a go, check it out. Explore your life from the vantage of open intelligence. It's just the most incredible adventure. But every day is the most incredible adventure. Every day is completely unique and fresh and bright and new. The data are never the same.